Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Vice President Kamala Harris is making reproductive freedom central to her presidential campaign, and her surrogates are attempting to argue that Donald Trump can't be trusted on this issue, even though the former president has promised not to push a national abortion ban at the federal level. Here was Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer on Morning Joe. We know that over a third of American women have no ability to access abortion health care until they're literally dying. It is a scary situation across this country. And as we have seen from Trump, he has praised his appointments to the United States Supreme Court. He was happy when Roe v. Wade fell and the Dobbs decision came out. And now he's trying to pretend that he wants a longer than six weeks, even though he's flip-flopped even on that. So you cannot trust Donald Trump when it comes to women's health, access to health care, and that's just one of many issues you can't trust, trust Donald Trump on. But this one we know for American women and our families and the healthcare community is, uh, is very important to us all. The governor of my former state of, uh, of Michigan, um, someone who I would say was not all about bodily autonomy and leaving medical decisions to yourself um, during a little event uh, you might have heard of, the COVID-19 pandemic, where uh, Michigan was just as locked down, just as mask requiring. Just, she had like separate rules for I think hardware stores and other things. If I recall, right. I didn't. I didn't live in Michigan. Thank but God, her and her husband, pandemic, don't but. worry, they had plenty of plenty of opportunity right. to they get did, out and about. Right. They did all the say. You know the. Uh, classic blue state political leader violating the very norms. Um, she also, of course, had the fake kidnapping plot, which sure. was um, organized by uh, by actually the FBI. Um, <laughs> But uh, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, yeah, so she's out there. Um, she has such a strong Michigan accent, by the way. I s saw you going, noticing that. Yes, indeed. I try to sound like I'm not, maybe not from Michigan. I try to push back on my Michigan accent. Yours a is bit. fine. Uh, but she there sounds are, like everyone in my I family. know a few people from Michigan that are in DC, and it's not my favorite accent, yeah, I must admit. Drive us back to the Midwest. Um, I'm not running for office, so I think I'm allowed to criticize <laughs> the Michigan accent. <laughs> So going after Trump um, on uh, abortion, uh, and you mentioned earlier in the show today that there's been some infighting on the right about this. Um, it looked to me like some of the more socially conservative people or people who prioritize a, um, uh, the pro-life cause more being dissatisfied with um, how Trump has handled this recently. Yeah, and I would just say that I don't think he's flip-flopped on this issue at all. I actually think he's been pretty consistent since he started running for president. He has always said that he considers himself pro-life, but he thinks that there should be some reasonable compromise on where the line is set for restrictions. He supports exceptions for rape and incest. And he's been saying for the past two years since the bill was pushed through that he thought Florida's six-week ban was too early. Um, and he's consistently praised overturning Roe v. Wade because he thinks that the issue should be closer to the voters at the state level. And I think it's incumbent on the pro-life movement and the activists to do the hard work of persuading Americans that their position is the right one of creating a culture of life such that the idea of getting an abortion in the second or third term or trimester is considered unthinkable, um, such that you would have Floridians supporting the six-week abortion ban or other states supporting that as well. And it seems like instead of doing that hard grassroots work on the state level, they're more interested in criticizing Trump, who, again, has been pretty moderate on abortion throughout his political career. Yeah, because obviously the position that, and this is a position I hold, and even many libertarians who, you know, like myself, don't want abortion broadly criminalized. I'm okay with you know some level of criminalization as, as it goes on. Um, but the Dobbs decision, the you know Roe v. Wade, thinking that there's no that the Constitution does not literally because of the the pri made up privacy right. thing, think that the the issue is like actually in the Constitution. It clearly isn't. Um, so my view is that yeah, well then this contentious political issue, which obviously the fa the founding documents do not actually weigh in on is best decided at the state level, given the you know widespread disagreement on this, it, on this issue in this country, different groups of people being okay with different levels of restrictions is the best way to de-escalate. Certainly we should not have a national federal policy um, on this, uh, and Donald Trump has not called for one, and 
And actually, his rivals, Nikki Haley, has not called for one either. Um, I don't remember if DeSantis wanted one. I can't remember if he said maybe. I, the, the person who injected it onto the national stage was Lindsey Lindsay Graham, Graham. Of all people, saying we have to decide this at the national level. Why would you say that? He's so obnoxious. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I think if you're part of the pro-life movement, and, and I consider myself pro-life, I'm not a pro-life activist. It's not my, I'm not a single issue voter on that. Yeah. But I would say, you know, we live in a two party system where like it or not, you have two choices essentially for the presidency. And if an abortion is an issue that really matters to you, you have a choice of someone who has basically just said that he wants to leave it to the states, or you can pick the person who wants to sign a federal law that would basically enshrine Roe v. Wade across the United States, meaning no restrictions anywhere and you're gonna have more abortions. I mean, that's just a fact. So weighing the lesser of two evils, I think is reasonable in this case. Um, some people would like to have all of it or nothing, I guess, which you're allowed to do, but I don't think it's a realistic way of looking at how our political system works. Um, and so I find myself kind of frustrated by the consternation over Trump's position. Um, that being said, I mean, if you vote for the guy and he wins or you help him win, then you have some leverage to say, hey, hey, guy, I got you into office. Would you consider maybe coming I a mean, little bit over to my side? True, but right, that I, Paul, on the on the right policy is just whatever Trump says it is. I mean, he could he can rewrite the policy platform to say whatever he is. And broadly speaking, don't you think conservatives are fine with it because it's more about him than it is about the policy? I think in this case, it's more of a strategy yeah. decision where in terms of public polling, public opinion polling, most people agree with Trump on this. Yeah. Um, 15 weeks, exceptions right. for rape and incest. Right. That's the most popular position. And uh, and again, going back to the left on you know the pro-Palestinian contingent coming home to the Democrats, the pro-life contingent is kind of trying to do the opposite. Mm. But they, they would argue, and I think this is a fair point, they did kind of get a victory when they went hard against Trump over the past couple of weeks. And then he came out against the Florida amendment, which would have basically shot down any restrictions yeah. on abortion. He said he thought that was too extreme. And Gretchen Whitmer tried to paint this as a flip-flop, like, well, he supports the six-week abortion ban if he doesn't vote for this amendment, which is incredibly dishonest because mm -hmm. there's obviously a lot of latitude between a six-week ban and an amendment that allows abortion at any time for any reason. Yeah, I mean, he's, over the course of his entire, you know, time expressing political opinions, he, has, he was a former Democrat and he, he sure. was not pro-life back in, you know, the early aughts or before that, but as long as he's been a, you know, Republican political official, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. That does it for us today on Free Media. Let us know what you think about the show and like, share, and subscribe. It was nice to be back with you, Amber, after a two-week break. We'll be making content again next week. Uh, thanks for watching.